If you've ever wondered if there's carbon in ashes, we're about to send three samples out to get tested. One of those samples involves giving Adele a haircut. I don't particularly want to chop off that much, but it's for science, so things you do for science. Signed and sealed, y'all. Uh, we're also testing some ashes from one of our customers, Jeff Hoffman, who gave us permission to test ashes that uh, come from his father. Sniffle here. Uh, we're also sending some aquamation ashes. Aquamation is another method that's not cremation. Uh, they use water and an assortment of chemical salts and heat to break down the body and create something that's similar to the ashes that you get from a furnace. <laughs> we're just jumping out of frame and jumping back in. We're going to B&B Laboratory um, because they were the ones that um, actually tested some of our ashes to find the carbon content in them. And I mean, we're super excited to meet the team and see their facility and, you know, check them out. They're in College Station. b, &B Labs, which is part of TDI Brooks, they are a large third-party independent um, testing lab. They test different um, samples and they uh, turn them back and, and provide scientific explanations of, you know, the contents, forensic uses, things like that. Um, so we actually had cremated ashes, aquamation ashes, and hair samples. And we're really curious to see the different carbon yields in all of those different samples um, and partner closely with the scientific community and bringing greater transparency and awareness and education around this amazing process. Yeah! <laughs> Do it. These are the bloopers, right? <laughs> I'm Mike Gaskins. I'm a graduate of Texas A&M University. My degree is in genetics, actually, but here I serve as the analytical laboratory uh, chemistry lab manager, and I specialize in analytical chemistry and mass spectrometry. You know, we do this carbon analysis on soil samples and sediment samples from the bottom of the ocean from all over the world. And we've been doing it for years. This stunning octopod seems quite interested in Alvin's poor manipulator arm. <laughs> so, getting the samples here that you guys sent to us, well, I was really intrigued because mm -hmm. this is not something that we've ever done before, obviously, <laughs> nor would I ever have imagined that we would do this. <laughs> and when we first got these samples and I was telling the, uh, all the lab employees that we were, were doing this and why we were doing it, it changed my perception of death in general because it seems so morbid to actually bury ourselves preserved in a box than it does to do something like this. Mm -hmm. This is something that's really important to us and to all of our customers. A really big part of all of it is making sure that you know there is precision and there is transparency on the science side of it for everyone involved. Well, my response to that is, is yes, um, there is carbon listed here. So this is the carbon analyzer. Through all the questions that I've been asked, it's like every client, every project that we get, it's the goal is just not to give them the answer they want. In this world, if you try and run a laboratory like that, that's fraught. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is there are serious legal implications for something like that. So, you know, establishing chains of custody for samples from start to finish, including the data, because all of that, again, from cradle to grave is what we talk about when we're talking about samples and data. No pun intended, and yes. here, pun intended, exactly. <laughs> so this is, this is Dr. Hillary Agbo. Adele, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. What were your expectations? Well, it's it? kind of strange. I never got like a sample with the name of a dead person, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I have to do what? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's, it's good. Yeah. Probably like, I think it's, it's probably going to catch on as time. Goes by. What was so interesting was seeing the aquamation ashes oh, yeah, yeah, being yeah. so high. I like I would have had yeah, no idea. Yeah. Were... I, I, I like the sample the most because it was the most homogeneous mm -hmm. of all the samples that we received. Mm -hmm. Again, if you want to be transparent, really what science is about, it's mm -hmm. not about, oh, well, this person, I'm trying to prove them wrong or I'm trying to prove my idea is right and yours is wrong. That's not really how science works. So. And that's why we're like, we want to be so transparent and we're like, invite people in and show them like, Here's exactly how this works. Like, you know, you're dealing with something that's so um, sensitive that it's just, it's so important. Like, if the science is legitimate, lead with science, you know? Science always wins. <laughs> I feel like a right dope with this outfit. <laughs> <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, 
You look like a dork without the outfit on, so. It's all right then. So the difference is minimal at best. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is the full 56 page report from TDI Brooks, which is BNB Labs. So if I uh, look at these results, we've got here a cremation 3.28%, a hair sample at 36.66% carbon, and aquamation at 16.91% carbon. Based on the percentages that we see here and that I've seen in the last year and a half of working here at Eternova, we get more than enough carbon to grow diamonds for our customers. 